Happy Sabbath. No, 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 no. That, don't, that doesn't convince me. Happy Sabbath. Much better. Next time I'm going to ask it again to see with more energy. <laughs> How you doing, guys? I'm so happy to be here today. I am, my heart is full of joy today. Because, not only because I'm here with you, but because God gave me a surprise. <laughs> Benjamin, raise your hand. <laughs> He's a very good friend of mine for many, many years. And I sent him the link not knowing. He lives in Georgia. I had no idea that he was here Amen. in New York. Amen. And when I saw him sitting there, I'm like, what? <laughs> Thank you, Benjamin. It was a pleasure. Surprise. All right, hopefully this coming back. He just went away. <laughs> Guys, as uh, the pastor mentioned, my name is Ivelisse Gonzalez. And I, I'm from Dominican Republic. Because he said Dominican. <laughs> Dominique, and we know we have another island called Dominique, right? From the beautiful island of the Dominican Republic. And yes, I'm a mother of three handsome men. They are now, unfortunately, they're now part of, they're not following God's word path, but I'm happy because God's time is always perfect. He called me many years after, so I don't know why the, he has ready for them. The life has given us ups, ups and downs in many areas. And as the pastor mentioned before, in 2019, I was diagnosed with cancer. At the same time, the same month, my mom passed away. And one of my kids got sick. Imagine how I was. My heart was destroyed, completely in pieces. But God is so amazing that he made me concentrate on my family, taking care of the things that I had to take care of for my health, but not concentrated on my sickness as sorry me. And that allowed me to really conquer that. With this, he allowed me to see my path. I love to help. Oh my God, why I have not done this? I have help with kids, and that's the reason why I became a teacher, thinking that that will be my path. I help. I have helped people in sickness. I even went to, I've been going to a court to some friends, acting up like a lawyer. But as we know, like the areas of health, there's so many places that you can do, but we cannot do it all. We're not optimal. We have to find where we have to continue, where we concentrate so we can be got, become very good at it. And in my sickness, God allowed me to see that it was in the path of helping others to heal from pain. To have a, I call it to make peace with our past because our past is not never erased. It makes us who we are today, right? But why remember it with pain? It is better to remember it as a lesson learned, as a way of growing. Live a joyful present and be able to create a beautiful future. That is exactly why I become a life coach and a life and a transformational mentor. In the last two years, that's what I've been doing. And this year, I just started uh, launching group trainings to help other people. But uh, enough about me. As I mentioned before, a life coach, we love to do math. Math for healings, pain, math for job searching, math for education. We love to do math, math everywhere. So today is not going to be any difference. We're going to create a map. But this map is to have as the title says, 
the path to a beautiful life. And what I'm going to tell you is not the only thing in the Bible about that, but it's the most important that I find that was more important for me to bring it today. Let's read, who can read the Bible verse today again? I want someone to, I don't like to be just talking. I would like people to join me. Can someone read the Bible verse March 8, 34? Let me see. When he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We have heard this verse so many times, right? In so many different areas. But what that has to do with me creating a map? What that has to do? But in the way when I was preparing the service for today, I was like, okay, I'm from the singles department, so you know what my concentration is going to be, right? But today is Sabbath. We cannot concentrate in one single group. We have to talk to everybody. And it's safe to say that the goal for our Christian life is to be saved right, to end up our life in the path with Jesus. But let's put it as a humankind, as a man and woman, individuals. We are here for love, to love each other, right? There are people that want, feel happy to be alone, and that's okay completely okay, but we have a very big group that don't want to be alone and get married, and sometimes we get married and we don't know what we're doing. And we mess it up in the way. And we destroy so many things on the way, and even our kids, because we didn't know better. And today we're gonna do a roadmap with four steps. How many steps? Four. four steps. I need four volunteers. Raise your hands. I call, oh, I'm a teacher. I call out. You don't volunteer, I point to you and I call you your name. Not by name because I don't know you, but I will point to you. You want to be? Okay, so you're going to look for uh, Thessalonians 5 from 16 to 22. And that will be step one. Another volunteer? Good. Step two, March 10, 45. Next. Step three, Galatians, Galatians 2, 20. And Benjamin, step four, Proverbs 10, 22. All right. So in the roadmap, the first thing, as I mentioned before, we need to know where we're going. And as I mentioned before, as a human, as a man, as a woman, woman and man, we want to be happy. We want to find a better person, that special person that God has for us. And as I, I think the pastor hear me saying that when we have our training, not the better half, because I'm a whole. I don't know you guys, but I'm complete. Nothing is missing here. I don't care. I could be missing. I could be limping, but that's okay. I'm a whole person. The one that comes with me next to me is to walk a beautiful life together. Not because I'm missing anything. So in that in that role map, now we know where we're going, right? All the maps needs to know where we're going. Otherwise, whatever place we get, we're there. We arrive to where we're supposed to be because we don't know where we're going. The first thing we, the first step that we're going to do in this map is to step on pray. Step one, who has it? Who has step one? Step one. 
pray. First Thessalonians 5, from 16 to 22. all appearance of evil and the very good of peace sanctify you only and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body and be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ 23 thank you so spending time with Jesus that's our first step as a Christian we know that that's the first thing we have to do. When we wake up, throughout the day, when we go to bed, that's our first thing we have to do. But it's even bigger and deeper as an individual. Because the more time you spend with someone, the more you're gonna look like them. Anybody has a best friend here? Yeah? I have a best friend that she used to live here in New York and she moved to Georgia. And one day she was telling me that someone was saying something about me. And she turned around and said to the person, you're lying. Because she doesn't use those words. That is not part of her vocabulary. Because she knows me. She has spent time with me. And she knows my flaws. But she also knows my strengths. The more time we pray, the more time we spend with Jesus, the more we're going to look like him, but the more he's going to allow us to love ourselves. Amen. And remember what I told you that I'm a hold? That only happened, you're only going to understand that when you love yourself. And it might sound, a lot of people say that that's a, that's a selfish situation, but let's be selfish in this moment. Yes, because the Bible said that we have to love, Jesus said that we have to love others the way we love ourselves. But if we don't know who we are, and if we don't love ourselves, how are we going to love others? How can I give to somebody else what I don't have? My kids are not here today because I didn't know Jesus when they were growing up. And I don't feel sorry because time, God's time is perfect. <laughs> he brought me many coming. And I don't know what is the path that he has for them. Only he knows. It's my job to pray for my kids and trust the Lord. That's all I have to do. Pray and trust and love the people around me. Because I'm not here neither to save you. I'm not here to save nobody. So you're never going to see me outside. I rebuke you. That's not my job. That's the Holy Spirit job. My job is to show God's love to you. I don't care what you're doing. You can be smoking outside. It's not my job to tell you not to. It's my job probably told you you're going to get sick. You know that? But I love you anyway. And that only comes when we spend time with Jesus. When we pray, he put that on us. He put that love for us to share with others. The second step that we're going to do in this roadmap is serve others. Can you please remind me of the? Yes, Mark 10.45. Um, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen. You would say, but how that serving others has anything to do with my love life? Guess what? When you get married, you need to be 100% humble to serve that person. And not only I, as a woman, 
the men's too. It's an equal partnership. Equal. There's nothing up and down. Nobody's better than others. I was created an image of God. You were created an image of God. So there's nothing different. How that is going to help me? Because meanwhile, I'm still waiting for that special person. I build that skill. I get strong on that. I'm serving others. Because throughout the time, when we get married, difficult times are going to come. When you don't want to cook. When the, the husband came from work, or we both came from work, and we don't want to see each other. But if we remember and we have that strong ability on us, observing others, putting ourselves apart in the side, we will be able to do what it has to be done to maintain our marriage in the right place. And for you, they're already married. Those two steps, take it. They're for you. Because just because you're married doesn't mean that everything is perfect. There are struggles. And every single day, there will be something new. Because the devil is watching. He is checking in everything that we do. He doesn't read our minds, but he knows your character. He knows when you blimp, when you're nervous. He knows everything. And because of that, he's going to use it against you. And if you're not strong, guess what? You're going to fall. And it's going to hurt. That's why we have so many marriage breaking up. I hear a lot of people talking about that COVID uh, brought so many pain. There was so many people that got depressed during COVID. And I will say one thing, COVID didn't do that. They were broken before COVID. They were in pieces before COVID. But the, war, the noise of society didn't allow us to see it. So when COVID hit, the everything was silent. That's when we start noticing all the pain that is in this planet. So COVID didn't cause that. But COVID gave us the opportunity now that we know there's so much pain to do something about it. Now it is your job to start serving others. How? Serve your brothers and sisters at home without thinking what they're going to do for you. Serve your mom and dad. Your best friends, the people that you don't know at work. I know you have people at work that you don't care for them. Come on, don't. We know, we all know that this is, not, this is not a secret. We all might walk around and probably one day someone look at us weird and we're like, hmm, who you think you are? So let's build that skill. And remember that we always said, be careful how you pray. Because if you're wise for wisdom, what God is gonna give you? Situations where you have to search and look for learning. So let's work on that. Let's continue. And as the reading, the verse said, Jesus came here to serve us. He gave his life for us. Who we are thinking that we're better than him. We are not. He came to serve. And we want to look like him by spending time with him. So what we have to do? Sorry. I don't say that. The Bible said it. We have to do the same thing that he did. That's the only way for other people to come and know, to know him. If we follow his path. He, the whole Bible is a road map. The whole Bible. But we look at it. We spend the years studying, reading the Bible, but we don't really study the Bible. 
Let's take time on that. And serving others, it will be your weapon when difficult times happen in the marriage. Remember what I mentioned before? Situations are going to happen. You only know what is in front of you now. You don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. The future is not here. The past is gone. The future is not here. The only thing that you notice here is what is in front of you. So you don't know what is happening tomorrow. So build that muscle so you can have a strong marriage. And for us single, so we can be strong when that person comes along. Imagine two people that has no skills getting married. What a mess. <laughs> right? Divorce, the lawyers will be lining up. Oh, hmm, I have a business there. Let me get ready. I give it a year. And I got my papers ready so I can get some money from them. Fill it out, the divorce papers. So let's, let's get strong. Let's get strong in those areas. Step four. Uh, no, sorry, three. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Who has step three? Killing yourself. Galatians 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh... I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Who can tell me? Let's see if you guys can answer that question. Who can tell me how I can kill myself? Anybody? I'm sorry? Well, yeah, that could be. But that's not the one that I'm referring here for. Anybody? Surrender? Well, every time that we fast, we are killing ourselves. Killing ourselves is through fasting. How? Yeah, I will tell you how. When we fast, our body, what is the major source of energy for our body? Food. So every time that I deny my body from full, I'm killing my body. I'm telling my body, you are not taking over. You don't have control over me. We replace, this is what I do when I fast. I replace my time, my schedule of, e of eating for prayer time. And another thing that I do, because you know, our body is going <laughs> to come in at different times when we're fasting. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if I'm the only one. But when I'm fasting, that stomach has a cancer. <laughs> he decides to get the drums, the piano, and the panderas, and everything else. And he started even uh, uh, doing a merengue in my stomach. Or oh, a bachata. And every time that my stomach decides to do that, it's a reminder of praying. It's a reminder that I'm praying, God, I'm praying to God to give me strength, to allow me that when temptations come, I'll be strong. Temptations are going to come. And normally, like for us human. As humankind, they come from body touch, from feelings. That's the major one. What is the major temptation for a couple, for a married, married relationship? It's looking another woman or looking another man. And where is that coming from? It's from the body. As a single person, oh, we want a hug. We want to kiss. And from there, our body is going to tell us that we want more things. Amen. But if I'm able to fast and be strong on that area, I can tell my body, I don't know. We're not going there. Amen. I'm not taking the role. Or when 
at 2 a.m. in the morning, I wake up, and I have this man in my head, and I want to test him. Oh, no, I'm not going there. God is teaching me better. Or to the men's as well. So the more we take control of our body, the more ability we're going to have when temptations come. And remember, this is it's not an easy path. It's not easy. It's very difficult. Because, let's say, I came to, to God's work path 14 years ago. Right, Benjamin? 14 years. I know Benjamin before I become Christian. 14 years ago. So imagine I have 36 years of sickness. <laughs> and that doesn't go away with the blink of an eye. Even though God is allowed to do so, but he wants us to learn lessons, and he wants other people to see our transformation. And that's the reason why he doesn't do it with the blink of the eye, because he wants us. He wants to use us. So let's practice. I know a lot of people are talking, oh, but I'm sick. I take medications. I cannot do it. I work too hard. I need my strength when I go to work. But guess what? Science is ahead of you, guys. They know that when you fast, you're healing your body. And they are implementing it now in all the medicine regimens. Don't you see? They put it in the medical field now. Part of your medications is fasting because they know you're detoxing your body when you're fasting. So we're going to let science to take over when we had it first. Right? So let's just practice it. Let's just practice it. And our last step, who has it, is finance. Your screen. All right. Uh, Proverbs 10, verse 24. I just had it and it went away, but it's okay. Here it is. Proverbs 22. 10, oh, Proverbs 10, verse 22. Yes. Okay. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Amen. Amen. God gave us principles, and one of his principles is about finance. It is in the Ten Commandments, right? What is it? Which one it is that is in the Ten Commandments? It talks about finance. We had to give. We had to give back. Oh no, sorry. We had to give back to God our ten percent, the tithe. He wants us. He doesn't need our money, but he wants to know that he's number one in our life. And when we take that 10%, we have to make sure that we do it first because then we look out of everything and we say, if we start paying the bills before that, we're never going to end it up with the 10%, right? So we had to take it out first. But how that is going to help in my, in my single life and getting ready for marriage and how it's going to help me in my relationship with my husband and wife? Because a lot of husband and wives, there's a lot of divorce happening today because people don't know how to manage their finance. Yeah. That's one of the, that and looking around are the two major reasons for divorce. When we show God that he is first in our life, he will put everything else in place. You had to pay the rent. He will manage it. Amen. He will, listen, I will tell you one thing. And the, remember that I told you when my kids got sick? That year, I find a healing center to send my son for a month. 
and it cost me $7,000. And I didn't know where I'm gonna get that money from. But in my heart, I was deep knowing that that's what I had to do. God's work it out. And I talked to the congregation. I got the congregation help me out. The great New York helped me. And then the rest, he opened a path. And I was able, because I had to pay the $7,000 ahead before my son was, was able to go to the program. They, didn't, they would not allow him coming in before that. And I understand. It's a great program. It's a seven-day Adventist program in, in Tennessee. And I understand why they don't allow it first, because they have to pay the people that are there. They have expenses. They have things to take care of. So, yeah, they might have one or two persons that can give it all for free, but let's be honest. We cannot give everything for free. And God was able to take care of it. And he had done so many other things. If I start naming it to you, we're going to be here forever. But the more you put him first, the more he will structure your finance. He will give you the knowledge, the wisdom to do that. The path in our life, as I mentioned, like the, what we are, the roadmap that we just create, is for us to be happy, to have a beautiful life here. While we are thinking, waiting, oh, I'm waiting for heaven. This is heaven. Let's create heaven here. Let's make heaven here. Singles, enjoy yourself. Enjoy your singleness. You're never going to be that free. This is your time. This is the time for you to go with yourself and have that little drink juice that you want to have. No, drink juice. The juice is not a drink. Come on. Let's be honest. That juice, that tea, or go to the movies. Go to the theater. I remember I never did that before. And I started doing it with myself. And I'm like, oh, this is it. This feels good. This is good. And if you are capable to enjoy it with that by yourself, imagine how it's going to be when somebody else comes to your life. And also, as just past, it happened to that Pastor Hernandez, right? His wife is single alone now. Single and we know his widow, but he, she's alone now. So what happened now for her? If she doesn't learn, if she never learned to be by herself? She didn't look for it. It wasn't something that she chose. It's something that happened. So we need to learn to be with us. Look at yourself in the mirror. Wife, husbands, look at yourself in the mirror every day. And look how beautiful you are because God created you. You are an image of him. I'm sorry. If I am an image of him, this color is beautiful. This crazy hair, I call it, I call my hair that he has his own vocabulary. And I love it. I love it. Love yourself. That's the only way you're able to love somebody. That would be the only way. Let's continue building up. This is just four steps. Four steps. But there's many others in here for you to create. Added to it, ask God what other step do I need? And he's going to show you guys. Because as a life coach, I just started, as I mentioned before, I just started my group trainings. I thought that I had it all. And God showed me, working with other people, we are need to work on myself. So let's check and look around the people next to you, what it bothers you from them, looking deep on you. 
It is in you. And that's why it is bothering you. Because it's either you're missing it, you want it and don't have it, and that's why it's so difficult to see it in other people. I'm just going to leave you that everything that I say has nothing. It is nothing if you don't deserve it, if you don't really want it. If you don't really want to have that beautiful life. Let's prepare our hearts for that beautiful life. Let's prepare ourselves for that beautiful life. And remember, this is, not a, this is not a commitment with me. Has nothing to do with me. Has nothing to do with, with the pastor. Has a lot to do with you guys. God bless you guys, and thank you.